Howdy folks, Jeff here, and as you can see, I'm not in my work shirt. Uh, we actually came over to Florida, and John Gardner agreed to meet with us. Tell us where we're at, John. Hey, we're at Chipola College, AKA Tech Garage Studios. That doesn't look like much right now. We're filming a different show, but right now in between seasons, but we'll be back in January. But you know, you got a first look at it. Pretty cool college, Tech Garage kind of built into one, makes a great marriage. Glad you're here in Florida, glad to have you. Your wonderful wife, great lunch, great time. Awesome to know about your shop and the business and what ethics you provide out there in this industry. Thank you so much, Jeff. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking time to visit with us and letting us come in here because this is the neatest deal. We're actually in where they film Tech Garage. And he showed us around and behind the scenes. And over here, they have the neatest setup. It's like a uh, Knights of the Round Table with computers all the way around it because uh, this is actually the automotive class where you teach the, the kids. It is, this is the automotive facility. This is actually, they come in, they film the show here, but this is actually a working, functioning college automotive technology program. 1,800 hours, two years, highly employable, high wage, high demand career. If you're out there and you want a, uh, a job in automotive technology, this is the place to go. I mean, here or any tech school, I don't care where it is, just get into a tech school right now Man, there's a need. That shortage is real, Jeff. It, it really is out there in the shops, and that's why we're uh, hoping that a lot of the shop owners will see this. But when you say there's a lot of other programs out there, they need to be sure that it's a certified program. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, NATEF, National Automotive Technicians Education Foundation, it's kind of a sister to ASE. They certify the schools. You know you're getting into a school that at least teaching the standards that's going to be out there. You've got advisory committees like yourself that are going into these schools, working hand in hand with instructors, with the instructors, making sure that the stuff's taught's relevant, that we're teaching stuff that you guys need out there in the shop. And we're producing a student that you guys are asking for. It's not about us. It's about you, the shop owners, coming into these colleges and saying, this is what we need. If we can tailor our curriculum to it or they're working with you, they're doing the right thing. And when you talk about reaching out there and jobs and stuff, you were sharing with us earlier that you actually have a waiting list of 12 shops looking for students right now. Yeah, the shortage is real. I mean, we get a call every day. We need technicians. We need technicians. We're partnering with so many different manufacturers. I don't want to name them because there's just so many of them that are coming in here and say, how are you going to supply the need of the students or the technicians out there for tomorrow's workforce? And we're doing it, but you know, you have to help us as well. We send these kids out there. You gotta remember, no matter where they're going, it doesn't matter if it's Chipola College or UTI, WyoTech, it doesn't make any difference. They're entry level techs, and, and you, the shop owner, is gonna have to work with them. I mean, it's gonna take time. Um, they're gonna have the skills, they're gonna have the knowledge, but yet they're entry level techs, man. We're talking batteries, alternator starters, and if you can give them a little lower salary and perhaps work with them just, you know, as a mentor for six months, kind of like a training process. And that's hugely helpful. They'll be successful, I can guarantee you that. They have the foundation, they have the background, they just need a little more mentoring when they get out in the field. And there was two things that you mentioned is that number one, when you talk to your students, you tell them that when they leave here, they're still like entry level. They're, you're not promising, hey, they're gonna make 50,000. That's right. Which is a great thing. And the other thing is you're saying that, that uh, the shop owners need to be patient with them. They need to work with them. You've taught them a lot of the basics, and one thing that, that I, I saw as I went around here is you guys have a really neat program as far as, like right here we have a breakaway. You can take and show them the cooling system, and you work on the computers and teach them about it. Then you bring them up and you do some cooling stuff, and then you bring them back, and now we're gonna work on brakes, exactly. and then you take them up, and, and they have a shop right up the hill here that has the bays where they work on the cars, and you have a bunch of cars there that have been donated by the manufacturers. But the thing is, is you can only teach them what you have out here to work on. Yeah, unless they're gonna to go to a shop that has a 2007 Impala, you know, you work on a variety of things. We'll give them the basics, we'll give them the how-to, the knowledge, most importantly, tech schools will give them the ethics, man. What do you guys expect out there? You know, honesty, integrity, stuff like that. So when they go out there, they know what it's gonna be like. It's a hard job. There's no not gonna sugarcoat it. It still is. I mean, you're gonna sweat. It's tough turning wrenches, but if you and shop owners would just mentor and have an open relationship with an instructor, go find a technical school in your area. It's pretty simple. Go in there, if the instructor's any good, he's gonna be chomping at the bit to work with you. And then say, hey, let's, let's send some kids out there on a co-op. Have an open relationship, transparency. 
oh, I don't like this kid. That's fine. I got 24 others. Let's get a, a match and an actual, you know, something where it's going to mesh where you're going to be happy. You don't spend a boatload of money on drug testing, employee, and this kid leaves in six months because he's not going to make it. You're going to bring them along, have that relationship, that transparent relationship, and be able to call the school and say, listen, I don't like this one. I want another one. It's okay. Plenty of them. What's your specialty? What do you do? Can we match them? Can we make a, a lasting relationship that's going to build our industry? Because a lot of what you're teaching is, like you showed me up there, you have the engines that they break down and they put back together. You actually have transmissions that you're taking apart and putting back together. All of the shops out there might not necessarily do engine work like you showed them. They might not do transmission work, but they do brakes. And so that's where the shop owners, we need to be patient with the students that you're bringing with us and show them what we work on. And like you said, it is the new technology, and we joke just a little bit up there, you don't have a 10-speed transmission, no. and they've got new 10 speeds out there, and I don't know if y'all are working on the ADAS, yeah. the new ones with the sensors all around it and stuff. And so John and his groups can just give them the basics and, and teach them, this is what you're gonna have to do. And now these folks here, the thing I noticed was there's an outside shop area. So he, John said, yeah, you know, you're going to get dirty and you're going to sweat it's in some more. of the shops. It's 90 degrees out there. Because uh, it, all the shops aren't like this. This in here is actually air conditioned. Yeah, we call it fantasy land. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually have air conditioning in our shop. And so that's like real land. Yeah, so. exactly. But that's the neatest deal, John. And, and we appreciate so much you taking the time to share with the with the shop owners and with the students that might be looking. Because when I see a program like you, and when you have a guy like John that's out on TV, he's working with all these manufacturers, he's traveling around, and you're fixing to start heading out, going to on location to some of the different yeah, shops, yeah. and you see what's out there, guys like John are the ones where these kids should be lining out the door to come in to have some opportunities to learn from guys that have a lot of experience out there not just in a certain area. Yeah, I do tech garage, I do motorhead garage, but the truth is I'm in the ditches right here, you're in the ditches in the shop. I mean, this is reality, what you're looking at. I mean, we're not sitting here making this up. So, you know, I know what the shop owners are going against. I know what these techs are dealing with. So when we put these two together, like me and you, I mean, it's the, it, it's, it's, good. it's a great industry. Our, our future's bright, don't worry about that, that's for sure. It is. So that's what we just wanna let you know what's going on today and show you tech garage. As always, we appreciate you watching.